guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I am John P. On today's Geek Beat, Square kicks PayPal's... Oreos are more addictive than cocaine. The Irish are sticking it to Apple. Inmates are released just because a computer says so. And gummies are dead. Long live the gummies. Aww. It all starts now. Welcome to Geek Beat Live. Welcome to another episode. Another week, another dollar. Thank you for joining us each and every week. It's about week. all we earn for doing this show. <laughs> so I have something. Wow. For Creepy Kitty. Uh, of course. I knew it wasn't for me because you never bring me my gummies. Although today is a sad day. It is indeed. In the gummy bear world. I can't believe you're not in tears. I cried, I wept openly before the show. Hans Riegel, who is the creator and inventor of the gummy bear itself, has died. Uh, he was 90, though, for goodness sakes. He had a quite the life. And I'll bet you he ate a lot of gummy bears in his day. You know, I'm going to bet he did not. I bet he did. I bet he did at first, but probably not later in life. No, I bet he did it you all. You think he always the way ate? <laughs> In fact, if I were him, I don't think he lived to ninety my, and eat gummy bears. At the all moment day long. of my death, I would have been chewing on a gummy bear. I would have made sure that I actually died from choking on one of my own gummy bears. <laughs> so Haribo is the company that he started, mm -hmm. and of course they they uh, make and dispense the uh, the gummy bears. But interesting, I don't know if you knew this, John. The reason the gummy bear is called the gummy bear is Why? because the uh, you the mean original... the reason the name of the company is Haribo? Huh? Haribo? No. Oh, why? Go ahead. The gummy bear is named the gummy bear because oh. the uh, ingredient, the main ingredient uh, to make it back then, was the natural gum uh, Arabic. Oh, okay. Just a little bit of tidbit to so pass on to your because friends. it was gum Arabic. Yes. It, they called it a gummy bear. Well, I thought the reason the company was called Haribo was because the, it was made out of gum Arabic. Haribic. Haribo. Obviously, we're a little uh, confused kinda, on kinda, our statistics here and our uh, facts, yeah. but I think it's the gum. Did you know that gummy bears used to, they used to just have a flat, like, they, they just were like... Yeah, they were modeled after uh, the circus, the bears that appeared in the circus. And in 2007... They gave them a smile. They gave them a smile so that you could be happy eating your gummy bears. That's right. That's or right. that you could pretend that they weren't screaming all the way down. Speaking of screaming all the way down, Callie has finally <laughs> watched her first episode of <gasps> Doctor Who. So, I feel like I need to bow. I don't know why. Uh, so, yes, I have been holding out on Doctor Who because everybody is so addicted to it. I don't tend to... I don't like to watch a lot of TV, so I don't get myself involved in these things. But I finally have picked up Doctor Who. I've watched one and a half episodes. I watched the... Uh, you, you've regained a little bit of geek cred. Yeah, a but little bit. But you're still way behind. I mean, one and a half... I'm going to have to catch one up. One and a half of the first season of the new version, right? Correct. I haven't even started on the original season yet. You, oh, I mean, yeah. the original By series. By the way, don't even try. I went back and tried to watch the original ones. They were so bad, I couldn't even stand them. And you know how much I love Doctor Who. Well, I what makes even you think that I'm not more wow. cultured than you are to be able to stand to watch yeah. older episodes? You well, go ahead and do it. Charlie's Angels? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> By the way, speaking of people who have watched Doctor Who, did you know... Shiwa Lei is watching us. She is green in the chat room. Yeah, you guys know her. China. She's watching from China. Now it is 4, 4 a.m. It's there. like 4 Probably 4 30 now. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Thank you. And, I, uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who stays up late. I mean, there are a lot of people who, who stay up late for us. So that thank is true. You. All of you guys, you're awesome. And she's watched the season seven of the Doctor Who series. Yeah. She watched it online. 
I found out I could watch season seven, even though I only could watch seasons one through six on Netflix. Yeah. Guess who has season seven? Green. Well, Green has season seven, but also Amazon <gasps> Prime. Oh, I was able to watch it on Amazon so Prime. So Amazon Prime finally yeah. comes into play. Speaking of watching things online, how are we going to get internet connectivity while we're in the UK? We don't have a solution for that. Well, I uh, hear it's pretty good there. I know, but what I'm saying is we're going to be there all week next week and we don't have a hot spot. Yeah, anybody got a suggestion for a hot spot? Yeah, what what should we do? How can we get internet Paul? connectivity for a week while we were o while we're over in the UK? That is the question of the day. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. But we're going to take not. a quick break and we'll be right back to talk about Gadget! No news. News. Hey guys, welcome back to Geepy Live. She's your host, Callie Lewis. He's your other host, John P. Yeah. And it you don't is want to news know time. what his last name is. It's news time. Yes, it is. Have I'm you been so, enjoying your gummies? I have been enjoying my gummies. All right. I'm gonna so, keep well, enjoy I will be talking with food in my mouth all throughout this episode. Great. I'd like to apologize in advance. I'll try and make it not too bothersome for you guys. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, big news this week. HTC announced the One Max. Big news. Big I see what news. you did there. Uh-huh. Because the HTC One. inch screen. It's a big one. Whoa. That's what That's she what said. That's what she said. It is big. It's bigger than my Note 2, which everybody thinks is so big. But now the uh, the One Max is just gigantic. And I asked them to send us one for review. Yeah, I can't wait to test it out. I I will probably. I don't. Did you hear know. that? I asked for one for review. She says. I can't wait until I get my <laughs> new HTC One so that I can play with it at, to the exclusion of John P. That's fine. <laughs> That's not what I said. Because I'm the one with the wireless charger on my phone. Yes, you do. I am jealous of you mm -hmm. for that. But um, not only does it have a big screen, it also has a fingerprint uh, scanner on the back did underneath you know, the camera. Did you know that fingerprint scanner will do three fingers at once? I did. Not one, three. Well, is it that it'll do three at once, like all on it, or is it in, like it'll do either of the three. I think it does three oh, at okay. once or something. Because I thought, so I, I know that it'll launch like apps. Like you could set your this finger to launch a particular app, <laughs> that finger to launch a particular app, and that finger to launch a particular app. So I thought it was all individual. But Well, that Ben we'll says see. that, it, you know, Ben says it's three that are registered. He says it's three individual <laughs> ones. But why do you have to just go confusing facts? <laughs> with the story here, okay? I mean, if I wanted to do three fingers, let it do three fingers. All right, fine, John. It does okay. three fingers. Um, it will be available in October worldwide on Verizon and Sprint. Nice. And again, I can't wait to try mine out and not have let John touch it. Well, something that I'd like to try out is Sony's new A7 line of cameras. Now, these are... Uh, little tiny compact cameras, but they happen to have full-sized sensors in them. So if, you, if you're interested in mirrorless cameras, which, you know, funny little fact, some people think that I don't like mirrorless cameras, I, just I, because- I think that you've given that impression. No, John. I have not. <laughs> what has happened is some people have come forward and said, Mirrorless is cameras, the way to go. they're the only thing to have. And all I've said is, no, they're not as good as, like, the big old body kind of full-size cameras. Right. By, by, some people, by some people, you mean the legendary world... Trey Radcliffe Trey, is one Trey of them. Radcliffe, yes. But there are many, many others, and so... Well, you can never say that there is only one way to go on anything, that's right. anywhere, because that is just not the case. That's right. So, anyway, back to the story. No I, back, no PC battles going on in your head, Kelly? <laughs> right. I am actually excited about trying out one of these cameras. They've got a 24-megapixel hybrid autofocus system. And they also have the A7R, which has a 36.4 megapixel sensor. Nice. Um, these cameras have some interesting features because they have Wi-Fi built into them, and they also have 
NFC, near field communication. So what you could do is you could take your little phone and tap it to the camera yeah. and you could control your camera with your iPhone natively. Like there's an app and you could mm -hmm. like set up the, sh the shutter and stuff. You zoom in or out. Yeah, you tried, you yawned. I tried to. I caught it. <laughs> um, now they but have talked. They have a full frame uh, a mount system for these cameras, but the problem is they don't have a lot of lenses. This is the one weakness on these bodies, in my opinion is you can't get the same lenses. Yeah, you get the same big, huge sensor now, but like, you know, you can get much more awesome Nikon or Canon yeah. lenses if you're willing to go with the big body. Still, for something really small and portable that you can carry around, these are gonna be amazing. Awesome. The prices are fair. You gonna Looking try forward em? to giving them a try. Uh, well, somebody might want to look forward to giving Twitter a try on the stock market. That's true. They finally have uh, decided on their ID, which is TWTR. Twitter. Twitter. So and that's about it. They're all, no, that's not <laughs> it. They're also going to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange, which... Which is different than what Facebook did. Yeah. They went to NASDAQ, um, and a lot of people said smaller is not as good of a choice. Um, so Twitter, I guess, decided to try the other option. Out. Step it up with the big boys. They're trying to make Facebook look bad. Well, another thing that Twitter decided to do this week was allow people to send other people who uh, don't yes. follow them direct messages. That is true. Uh, I still have not seen that capability roll out to my account. Uh, I so have. it's still being rolled out. Yes, I know you get everything first. Um, <laughs> and uh, so this potentially can create a lot of spam. Um, we'll we'll just have to kind of wait it out and see. But what this the the, the what this serves as a purpose is the ability to not have to follow somebody just to be able to have a private conversation with them. And I find myself needing to have that private conversation without really wanting to follow people on a regular basis. So well, I'll be we'll, interested to try we'll it out. We'll see what happens. I think what's going to happen, I, I got it and I enabled it. You, it have you gotten it, a lot of spam? It doesn't just happen. You have to click a little checkbox mm -hmm. in order to allow it. But when you do, I haven't gotten any yet, but it's only been one day. But I think what's going to happen is people like you and I, and you know, if you've got a significant number of followers, I think we're going to end up making it onto like marketing lists and stuff. Yeah, I think it's just going to become a nonstop stream until you turn it off. Right. That's what I suspect is going to happen. Who knows? Anywho. Well, uh, we told you a while back ago that Apple lost their um, they, their court case. They were found to be collusion, collusion, collu collusion. collusion. Guilty of colluding. <laughs> colluding, thank you. <laughs> In the ebook market. Um, so the judge has appointed uh, the uh, DOJ Inspector General Michael Bromwich, former to, Inspector General, former, to inspect all the deals that they're making for the next two years, so that they can't do anything bad and under the radar. That is bad when your wow. company has to have like a big time <laughs> prosecutor dude watching Just over like your shoulder, hovering. Look, he looks like Steve Jobs. He does. He kind of yeah. does. Okay, one last quick one before we take a commercial and go to break because I uh, mentioned it in the in the opening today. Ireland has a bunch of tax loopholes and companies like Google and Apple and others have been taking advantage of it by moving essentially offshore locations. They take people yeah. that were in the US, move them to Ireland or set up shop in Ireland and run all their profits through the through Ireland and essentially they don't have to pay taxes in Ireland, they don't have to pay taxes in the US. Well, they have to pay it's, very little taxes in Ireland. It's a tax loophole right. and the US is pissed about it, okay? And, and Ireland's thinking maybe we ought to just stop this because we don't want to be seen as a tax loophole place Yeah. Um, because that could create some issues for them. So they're thinking about cutting that out yeah, completely. They claim right now that they're going to shut it down in 2015, but we'll have to see if that lasts because you know, it's a long time from now, and there's plenty <laughs> of money to bribe them on, right. you know, keep that loophole going. So, I don't know. We'll see. What's the real question of the day? The How Do you eat gummy worms or gummy bears? Yes. What's your favorite type of gummy? Give we it. need to know. Head on over to geekme.tv forward slash 
same spot right there and tell us what kind of gummies you like to imbibe. I think. Yeah. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live, my fair weathered people. They're not really fair weathered. They're just people. Really? We love you. Thanks for fair coming back. Here. Did I mention? Do you want some help? I'm just gonna. I, no, I'm Thank just, you. I was you, just Dave. gonna let him hang himself. That's all. Did I mention? You look very, very nice today. Why? Thank you, John. Oh, oh, you're not talking to me. No, I'm talking oh, to. Oh, okay. To them. You're talking to me. <laughs> it is time it is for gadgety us time. to check about talk about gadgets. Yeah. yeah, we actually uh, had quite a lot of fun this week playing with Square Cash. Square is a company um, that you've probably heard of. They make these little uh, Square payment processors that a lot of merchants use, including Apple and um, and uh, food trucks and stuff like that. And you plug um, it into like your iPhone. Yeah, you just plug it into your iPhone. Ten and bucks. It makes you can credit pick, card you can pick processing super easy and cheap. So they've now come out with Square Cash, which allows you to send email to anyone just by sending an actual email. Did I say send email? Send email to anyone I'm sorry. by sending it. Send That's cash. amazing. <laughs> right? They can send an email to anyone by just Break sending an email. Through. Send cash to somebody by sending an email. And it's free of charge. And really, there you just enter your debit card information and then that's it all right here's the deal we did a video about this we did You're a gonna blog want to pay post. attention to that we did a blog post all about this oh dave's showing some of the video right yeah. there and callie and i tested this out by sending money back and forth to one another somehow she ended up with most of my money in this exchange i don't know what exactly went down there but i would say you need to be looking out for con artists but what can I say? You didn't. You just kept sending it. Anyway, the point is, it was really cool. Actually, I liked it, and I was, I was set. I was setting out from the beginning to be skeptical and not like it. Yeah, I honestly was. I was too. I thought it was a cool idea, but I wasn't. And after all we did it, how. I was like, "This is awesome." <laughs> so now everyone can send me five bucks. Just go to. <laughs> Actually, just, just send an email, email to, to John at geekbeat.tv John at geekbeat.tv and cc cash at square.com. Put an amount in the subject line. As just, much as you want. Just send me some money. Why not? Wow. Why? I got a dollar from a viewer. Did you really? I did. Okay, you can send it to Callie. <laughs> it's okay. I know nobody's going to send it to me. But why not send it to her? Her favorite drink is the... <laughs> You're never going to remember that, are you? Pumpkin spice latte yeah. at Starbucks. It's like five bucks. So send five bucks to Callie. She'd go get a pumpkin spice latte. She'll remember you forever if you do that. I will. Probably not, but that's um, okay. Well, moving all right, on. moving on. So you definitely go check that out at geekbeat.tv slash square, square cash. Um, now, last, or this year, actually, at WWDC, we saw them do a cool little demo of this virtual but real game that you use your iPad for. Well, it's it was, out now. Exactly. It's called An Anki Drive, I guess. Um, it's, it's this cool little iOS app um, that you download, and you have these real-life cars and a black mat, just like you did when you were a kid. There's, but There's three parts. There's a track, there are cars, and there is an app. And you drive the cars on the track Isn't that with what the I just app. Said? Yeah. Okay. But the, <laughs> the mat, not like what you had when you were a kid, actually has some embedded um, sensors and um, kind of communication that will send the information about where the car is or where uh, other things are on the track to the car. So it can not only take direction from you driving it on the iOS app, but make its own intelligent decisions about whether to swerve and not hit another car. How nice. cool is that? But the best thing about it is you can hit other cars and you can shoot <laughs> other cars and all kinds of things. You can destroy them. And when you do it in your little app, it makes things happen in real life. 69 bucks each. Uh, go have some fun. Might as well. Well, it's 69 for like the cars. But, right. But the track is $199. Oh, the track is, oh, the track is $99. Yeah, okay. $199. 
So um, I don't know if uh, everybody knows this, but I think a lot of people are familiar with the fact that um, in baseball. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> in baseball, they use a computerized system during um, the uh, uh, scouting process and uh, trade-offs. What is it called? Trades. Trades? Is that really what it's just called? Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> and they use this process to um, determine who to keep around and who to scout and all of that. So now prisons are using that same kind of technology in order to determine who gets parole and who doesn't. That's right, people. Robots are now telling you if you get to be in prison or free. <laughs> Um, it takes between 50 and 100 different factors from each prisoner um, and will determine whether they're likely to return to prison and recommit a crime um, and, or whether they're more likely to kind of go off and be, you know, Model citizens. Model citizens, thank you. So the actual developers say that the decisions should be overruled 8 to 15 percent of the time based on gut feeling, I guess of the per parole people? <sighs> I don't even know what to say about that. The, the parole board. The parole board. The parole board. The, the parole parolees. people. That's the same thing. I shouldn't know jail lingo. Come on. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. But you know what kind of lingo you might enjoy? What's that? Virtual reality lingo. Right. I love augmented reality and virtual worlds. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry Ellisworth and Rick Johnson have uh, created something that... A, a badass might... Kickstarter project. Okay. You're Check this that thing far. out. Look at this. There's some glasses. You slap these things on your face. You look at something and other <laughs> things appear. See, look, these folks, they're sitting down at a normal little ordinary table that's got some white stuff on it. They put these glasses on. And they and have a wand. Bingo, they do, it's like Harry Potter in real life. They also have two little projectors on the top of the glasses. Yep. And so what happens is the glasses track your head movement, the projectors show you what you should be seeing when you look at wherever the heck you're looking. That made me dizzy. And wow, you're bingo weakling. bango, you've got virtual reality. It's like the, uh, what's it called in Star Trek? The oh, holodeck. The holodeck. It's like a holodeck. Wow that you can put in your pocket. Yep, and so they are bringing that to reality, thank goodness. You can get, they've already got over half a million dollars with the pledges, they still got 27 days to go. Go get you some of these glasses for like 30, th uh, 299, 300 bucks. Yep. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we are going to take a quick break, come back, and we've got more awesome stuff coming up. And don't forget, you gotta tell us what kind of gummies you like. Are you into gummy brains, gummy bears, gummy, gummy worms? Uh, leave a fame spot at geekbeat.tv slash fame spot. Just a 15 second quick video and let us know. Hey guys, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. <laughs> you misunderstood what I was saying, John. We're pointing at each other. This is how we communicate. Uh, we just point at each other and the other understands. Sometimes Except for we this grunt. time, oh. <laughs> you did not understand what I was saying. I was saying, behind you. Oh, behind me. Because oh. it's time to talk science. It's time to talk Oreos. <laughs> and why? And no, what? we're not sponsored by Oreos. No, we're not. What do Oreos Oreo? and science have to do with each other? Not on camera. You better not eat that on camera. You're going to have like black teeth. I know. Somebody, somebody has been eating all the Oreos I think here. that would be Dave Curley. What? Uh-huh. I only eat Chick-fil-A. Uh, Here's the deal, folks. Oreos are more addictive than crack. It's been is, scientifically proven. This is how they did it. All right. So they put some mice in a little maze, right? Like we always do. And Poor they mice. put I know, right? They put um, some they put some uh, Oreos on one side and some rice cakes on No, was it rice cakes and Oreos? Yes, it was. I'm sorry. First of all, they put what were the first things? A salty drink first a salty and drink the cocaine. and a cocaine injection. 
So the mice eventually decided to choose between the two, and they would hang out over near the cocaine to get the injections. Right. right. Then, and then, then they chose to put the Oreos and rice cakes in there. And by the way, I love rice cakes. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with them. Um, and the or the the right the mice wound up going towards the Oreos. And what they're saying is the Oreos created more of the protein C FOS, whatever that is, well, it's a, it's than a, the cocaine when they measured it in the rats. But you know it's what? It's a they, nutrient that it me that measures happiness. Yeah, but you know what they didn't do that I can tell? They didn't they put, put the, the Oreos two together. and the co and the cocaine. I know. And then let them duke it out. They didn't. That's do that. what I was trying to figure out about yeah. this story. Why didn't they put both of them in there? I don't know. Usually... Wouldn't they, like, get a cocaine hit, and then when they come off of it, go chew up some Oreos? I don't know. Usually, I, don't know. I do my Oreos and my cocaine together. So I think they're a nice pairing, maybe oh, with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Don't put them on the really? same mirror, though, John. That sounds like a horrible combination. It was. It was a movie joke. Oh. Never mind. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> All, All right. right, so don't eat too many Oreos. The scientists who were doing that uh, that experiment have decided to quit Oreos. That's right. Ken is already but telling not me cocaine. we're way over time. Okay. We're going to skip number 14. All right. We're 14 skipping, or 13? We're skipping. Uh, we I'm can sorry. skip both of them. Oh, which one should we skip, 13 or 14? 14. Well, we'll do number 13 then. All right, Dave, cue up number 13. File this there. one under odd. Out in, uh, out off the Los Angeles coast, off the Santa, Ca Santa Catalina Island, it just so happens that marine scientist Jasmine Santana was snorkeling and came across a giant dead, what or is this fish? fish? Or fish. An oarfish is like a scaly eel kind of creature. Only it's giant. Giant. It's actually what they expect that the sea serpent legends are made from. That's right. They can get, they say they can get up to uh, about over 50 feet long. Look this at that is, thing. That's what one looks like that, you know, that somebody filmed somewhere or another. It's just is this kinda, not it? It's swimming. That one? It's, oh, that one was dead. That's not it. It looks dead to me. It was swimming in the old briny. Okay. But what happened was she was snorkeling. She came across the dead one. And instead of being like, oh, my God, there is a giant dead 18-foot-long piece of flesh floating in the ocean. She decided, she said, oh, cool. She grabbed a hold of it. With 15 other people. No. She was out swimming. She grabbed a hold of its dead carcass and swam it to the shore oh my God. where she then recruited a bunch of people to help her pick it up <laughs> and put it on the shore. That's and ridiculous. So now, because these things are really rare, yeah. they're going to put it in the museum. They're going to let it decompress and they're going to put it... Decompose. Decompress. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to sit back and... It's going to sit back and kind of relax <laughs> yeah. a little see, 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 see. in the museum. In the Catalina Island Marine Institute. Mm. So, all, right. all right, we are going to move on to robot No, time. we got to take a commercial. Just out after the break. <laughs> it's robot time. Callie's favorite time of the year. I don't even bother with introductions at this point. Mm -mm. Why would you? <laughs> all right, so there is a company in New York City, John, mm -hmm. that specializes in gifts. So mm -hmm. you go to their website, you order a gift, and you send it on. Well, they said, we need to s set ourselves apart. So now you can not only order a gift, you can also order a handwritten note done by a robot. I see. So the fact that we never write handwritten notes anymore is just getting on their nerves and thinks that we should be you know, getting back to our, uh, to our roots. And, and, and having a robot do that for us. It's a combination of the roots and the future brought together. They couldn't just get, like, some little old Jewish lady with excellent handwriting to sit there and write our notes for us. They had to build a robot to do it. Exactly. They couldn't install a font? 
I see. So uh, it is five dollars per note, and uh, you have up to two hundred and fifty-five characters, which is fairly normal for like if you were to do an Amazon, you know, note with your with your. Uh, gift. So it's a calligraphy, which is great. It's beautiful. The only problem with this is when you actually write something to that person, if you ever do, they will just be confused as heck. Right, because they'll be like, oh, Wait, well, what, what happened? Was this? You used to have beautiful handwriting, and now and it's now a it just tragic. Sucks. It's a wreck. Yep. Okay, like this show. <laughs> um, also, we've got the... Uh, HD T Global, which is a defense contractor company, they have designed robots this. that will kill us all. Yes, take a look. Oh, I like it so far. I know you do. So this is a hunter killer robot. Um, they just tested this in a four day uh, weekend with the government, obviously before uh, it shut down, um, <laughs> to um, to test out you know real live ammunition and see how it can help us in war zones. It can run on tracks, can carry 1,250 pounds of gear. It's powered by a 32 horsepower engine and can run on diesel or military jet fuel with a 15-gallon fuel tank. So wow. it also has um, the machine gun. I don't know what this means, but it's a supposedly an FN Herstal M240 7.62 millimeter, whatever that means. That's the size of the round, I know. I know what that is. I'm it's just like, I don't know what the machine gun itself is. It's basically like, uh, like an M16. It's like an okay. M16 uh, mounted on a on a robot, so it's I figured you'd lethal. like that. It's pretty cool. It, w it wouldn't be as cool if it was chasing me, but, you know, it's pretty cool as long as I can make it chase other people. Okay, it fair legs. enough. Wait till it has legs. Yeah, when it has... Oh. W wait till they combine that with that running dog robot we showed off the other day. Oh, God. And you can control it with, like, a game controller-like thing. So oh, so it's like can, a video game. Like Let a video me game. go kill those people. <laughs> nice. Uh, this you might like. You Actually, you probably won't like this one. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the Bionic Man uh -huh. is coming to life. Steve Austin? No. Um, this, well, actually, they're going to be debuting it today. I have not been able to find any pictures oh. um, in at New York Comic Con. But I feel a little sick at my stomach already. There is a Bionic Man now created from 60 to 70% real live human Parts. That is disgusting. I'm sorry, I'm not real life human parts. Um, it has the 60, 70 percent of the functionality of a human. So, but it is using real life parts. I don't know what percentage that is, though. Um, it has a functioning heart that basically uses an electronic pump to uh, beat and circulate the artificial blood. Uh -huh. uh, and then it carries the oxygen just like in a real human body. And then it has an artificial implantable kidney. And it also has a dialysis, like, uh, basically, um, the, the kidney works like a kind a of dialysis, a dialysis machine. unit, so. And it's wearing Google Glasses. And it's wearing Google Glasses. Anyway, this will be very interesting to see in action and as they uh, increase the number of parts used. It doesn't have a heart or brain yet. Like the Scarecrow. Right. Why would we possibly build robots that have all this circulatory I'm breathing sorry, kind of limitations and stuff, and we can just stick a battery pack in them. I don't know. But what I do know is, it's planes, trains, and automobiles time. You will like my first story of the day. I will. You will indeed. Okay, give it to me. Because it's about women's empowerment. Jesse Combs uh -huh. broke the world speed record. Nice. For women. And uh -huh. she was driving this. How many women did she have to beat? North Amer the North American Eagle. That's it. Well, any every woman on earth. She's the fastest woman ever. She went 392.9 miles an hour. Nice. Destroying the former record of 308.5, which was set in 1965. Hey, she's. You you, you, she's hot. She's kind of hot, yeah. You may recognize her. She's a fabricator. She's a television show host for Extreme 4x4. Oh. And uh, a bunch of other stuff. And she was a Mythbuster, 
while uh, Carrie was on maternity oh, leave. She, okay, she okay. filled in for Carrie when she was on maternity leave. Awesome. So that, well, congratulations to her. That's awesome. The, Fantastic. She broke it. Uh, she broke that record. That that machine you're looking at right yeah. there is a modified F-104A Starfighter jet. Wow! It has that a sounds... 52,000 horsepower engine in the back. So pretty cool. Eventually, they think that that thing will go over 700 miles an hour. Whoa! But so far, she's got it up to about you know almost 400. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at for all. a girl. Just kidding. Anyway, electric car charging manhole covers. The city of New York, believe it or not, uh -huh. is going to electrify manhole covers so that... I heard about this. You know those, uh, you know how my little electric phone charger thingy works now? Uh-huh. Um, it's inductive charging. You put your phone on a little base and it just charges. You don't have to plug it in, it just yep. charges. Well, look at that. What they're doing is they're marking out spots that have manhole covers, and that manhole cover will recharge an electric car from below. That is awesome. What I want to know is... We've seen tidbits of this in, in existence already, but not uh, kind of officially implemented. Yeah, well, that's true. We've seen little things where they want to, like, uh, you know, put electric chargers under roads right. so that you drive and you charge as charge you drive. As you go. This is this is interesting. Yeah. I would like to see how they're going to electrify, magnetize, whatever they do, those those manhole covers and if it remains safe to walk over and play on and do right. things like that. But I, I guess Surely it, it has to be. Yes sure. it is. And don't call me Shirley. Uh -huh. Next story for the day. It's a sad one. Land Rover is eliminating the Defender line. Oh, no! That's right. Defenders are like the Jeep equivalents of Land Rovers, like they're old school, okay? They've oh, okay. been building them for 60 years. That's what it looks uh, like. I recognize that. It's okay. pretty badass. Yeah. Okay, you could drive it anywhere. But the problem is that... Uh, they don't, they're not exactly meeting emissions standards. Mm. And there's nothing they can do to really? make it meet emissions standards. Wow. So they're saying goodbye to the big old beast. They're going to stop building it after 67 years in 2015. Aww. However, Land Rover does say that they're going to replace it with something else, although I don't think anything can ever truly replace the Defender. That should, be, that should be the name of a movie. That should be. The Defender. <laughs> so, speaking of replacing things, we're going to replace our faces on screen with, with a commercial. With yours. Or with yours. <laughs> <laughs> leave a good? fame spot at gaming.tv slash fame spot and leave the question of the day, which is your favorite kind of gummy? Any gummy at all. What I like, is it? I like Cali gummies. Hey guys, welcome back to Geepy Live. I'm Callie. I'm John P. and it's that... Favorite time of every show when we open up the boxes and it's like Christmas in, not uh, July, October. October. It's like Christmas in October. It's, it's Christmas all year round for us here and for you virtually. We were just doing the math and we decided that if we got on average five boxes per week, that it would be over 250 boxes a year. Then, even though I said it would be over 250 boxes a year, <laughs> Pablo had to correct me and, say and tell me it was 260, which I'd like to point out for the didn't, record, didn't Pablo, just... is over 250. <laughs> so we said the same thing. Anywho, All right, let's start on the packaging. We do have five packages today, and the question is, what, oh, there you go. That's the one you're going to open then. Open right, it up. What do we have? Let's see what you got. This is from Automatic. Automatic. Oh, your I have smart been, no, driving assistant. I have been waiting for that for weeks. Drive smarter, save big on gas. What does it do? It is brand spanking new. Meet the automatic link. Uh, this needs a little uh, opening. Oh, it needs a yeah, little right opening? Oh, uh, where? Right here? Right there. Okay, there we yeah, go. Thank now you. it's open. Okay, so what? let's get into it. You know what that is? No. That is a dongle. You said dongle. I said John dongle. P. It's an OBDC 
dongle. Yes. Okay, here's the thing. Every car, that? every car made in like the last few decades has this little port. It's a yes, standard I'm port. I'm familiar with it. Okay, maybe not everybody is. So everybody's car has an OBDC port. So what you do is you take this little dongle, you stick it all up in that port, <laughs> and then you connect to this with an iPhone app. Okay. That iPhone app is going to give you all kinds of information about your car, your right. driving habits, and how you can be more energy efficient now, with your gas and driving also, habits. Now, this also, like other OBD uh, devices and dongles, do, does it provide you information on um, the actual problems that the car is reporting as well? I do not have that information in my data banks. Okay. <laughs> but we will do a complete review on it. Ken is going to shove awesome. it all up in his car when we get done with the show. That'd be cool and to, we're gonna to come back figure out how you review. can do better. Yeah, tell you everything that yeah. it will do. Awesome. It looks like a really beautiful design. It does. A really nice app. It's lightweight, too. It's going to be cool. And what's also cool is they're going to like let you monitor stuff. And if I recall, there's like no fee or anything. Not like what? a monthly fee. You buy it once and there's no oh. monthly fee. Wow. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Automatic. Another box. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, communicate over cellular. Dave, no. we got a box right here. Okay. Just thought I'd tell you that. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see here. This box. <laughs> okay guess there? who this box is from? Oh, 12 cells. Yes. And what do we have uh, here? The book book for iPhone 5. Here, you want to open as, the book book for iPhone 5? As you guys know, we love our book books. They're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're like handcrafted leather. All, every single one is done original. Um, and we have them for the, our computers, for iPads. Now, here's the uh, iPhone one. So as you can see, it's it's leather, it's soft, oh, it's it smells nice. good. And inside oh. we have uh, the options for credit cards and driver's license and all that. All in one. And look, here's the, uh, here's how you know it's a book book. It has this, book book. this look. decorative. Look what it says. What is Volume it five. Nice. Because that's oh, for the iPhone. Nice little five. Touch. Very nice detail. We also received the high rise. Oh yeah. For iPhone five slash the iPad Mini. It's an it's adjustable like stand. desktop stand slash support. I have an idea. If you open that, okay. I can get the iPad Mini out and we can see how it fits on there. Okay. Why not? Why not? I've got not an iPad drawing. mini right here. Do you need yeah. this? No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I knew it. Ow, you cut me. Whatever. Nowhere near, people. This is, uh, so 12 South products, you guys know, um, we love them for their simplicity and their design. Um, it's Ooh. Everything is always done very nicely. Okay, let's see. We this have. one takes a little bit of assembly. Oh, it does. Oh, we're going to have to screw some things together oh, to make okay. this stand. All right, so we okay. won't put it together just yet. Yeah, there's this little thing of parts. Okay, so we're going to have to screw it together. Okay. We will put it together later, and we will show you guys all how this thing goes together and works. So hold your horses <laughs> on that. All right, we got three more packages. Yes. Uh, here, choose one. Big or small? Good things come in small packages. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what do we have in here? What do we have? Oh, a Go ID, personal emergency ID kit. This um, is, there are a lot of them out there that we've kind of talked about. Um, this is like a little tag. You can kind of see the examples here. You know what's and cool you about this one? on you. Yes. You can print it at home. Oh. Oh, so cool. what happens is you go to their website and you can create, you can put in all your ID information. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is they, I guess somewhere in the package, they must have included like the little label maker thing because you can print on your inkjet or laser printer. They've got some special way of doing this where even though you printed it at home, it still comes out and it's waterproof and stuff. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I remember cool. reading about it. Okay. So what you can do is you have this little tag and you can hang this thing on like your shoe, yeah. a keychain, a bag, anything you keep with you. They even have a little 
<laughs> safety pin. Safety pin here. You can safety pin it to something. That and, way, if uh, something happens to you, then you have that ID information for whoever finds you. Because first a lot responders. of us. For like a lot a of us, find tag, like a, like a medical, yeah, it could a be medical, like a medical ID tag. Yeah. But also not just first responders, like just somebody about as good Samaritan, for yeah. example. Like for example, you should be locking your phone and putting you know some information on your phone, but they wouldn't be able to open your phone up and access your kind of contact information to call somebody for help. That's true. By the way. Also, when you buy the Go IDs, they donate 25% to charity. That's right. For I did first hear about responder that. charities. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's cool. So check it out, guys. Go ID. They're also not expensive at all, from what I recall. We're going to try it out, and we will share with you guys the details of how that works. We also have a FedEx package here. Okay, from? This FedEx package is it's from our friends at Blast Media. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Look okay. at that. That looks like, they kind of look like tent spikes. What is that? They actually are tent spikes. These are nail pegs. But what's, they, they, they actually make these. Um, this is from. Uh, Can I open it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. And I'll explain. So they actually have uh, a new version, this version, which has an LED light on the top. So you can, when you're camping and you're out having fun, or for Halloween, you've got your, you know, stuff yard set decorated. up, your yard decorations, you can have little LED lights on them so you can find your way easier. Now, the reason that they sent this to me is because I have a camping trip with my sister coming up soon, and uh, so I'm going to give them a test and see how bright they are, if they're, you know, going to keep away bears. Aha. That'll, uh -huh. that'll keep you from tripping over the uh, ropes. So, can you see this exactly, right here? Exactly. It does keep you from tri tripping over the ropes when you uh, come out of the tent. See right night. here, there's, the, you hammer your, your, your stake in the ground, and it's got a little LED right there. On both of them, so uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it would be cool so if you had like the, 20 the of these things and you could just light your path yeah, everywhere. Exactly, Co Koglums. Co I should have asked how to say that. How do you say this? Where? Right here. Cocklins. Co Cocklins. Not sure. I guess I've never had to say that out loud. C O G H L A N S. Coglins. Coglins. So yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to. Uh, Test those out yeah. here in a few weeks. Yeah, sounds good. All right, there you go. And we have one more. We <laughs> My have sister's going to be like, what are you doing with one testing more package. units? We've already opened four things. Uh-huh. Wow, okay, completely. one more package. Oh, that's for me, too. Oh, <laughs> well, everything's for Callie. Well, Just kidding. Okay, here we go. This is from Eton. Yes, this is a hand crank. Eton specializes in a lot of uh, battery and solar powered devices um, for safety as well as just fun. Um, but this one is the FRX3, and it will, ha you can hand crank it. Um, it'll charge your smartphone while you're out camping and out in the wilderness. It's a radio. Uh, it's a radio. Weather band radio. It is, it is all sorts of stuff. What all does do, it do? So uh, it's AM, FM, WB, a digital radio. It has a display on it. Uh, it has the weather alert, the smartphone charger, solar panel. There's a solar panel right up top There's there. There's a solar panel. It has an LED flashlight. Where's the LED flashlight? Um, on the other side. Oh. Oh, there. Uh, the glow. In, it has a glow in the dark locator. Check it out. Nice. Has a DC input, mini USB, uh, headphone output, alarm clock. Wow, it has a lot of stuff. Yes, it does. It is crazy, filled with stuff in a small little package. It is. It's relatively lightweight. It's, it's got a little. It's got a little hook here where you could hang uh -huh. something H like hang it off of like your you know canoe or whatever. And it's got uh, it's got a rechargeable battery. And it will also take, looks like, three double A's. And I said yes, Robert. Uh, I said yes to this product, Robert Hudson, so that I could keep my smartphone charged while camping. Otherwise, I will forget to do it. There's the USB yeah, in there's and out. There's a pot that you boil and put the... Yeah, there's right. a pot that you boil to so do So it's got the USB input and output back here. Yep. And what are these? Like the head uh, auxiliary input and headphones. And they're covered up by this little rubber door that I guess is uh, kind of, you know, splash resistant. It's not waterproof, but it's splash resistant. I like that when you... It feels good, right? I haven't touched it yet because you're hogging it, but You have to hold should. this button down and crank because the battery's not charged. Okay. Stop! Ah! 
Here you go. You can play with it. Okay, guys. Awesome. We're going to play with all these goodies, and we're going to give you guys reviews just like we always do when you head on over to geekbeat.tv forward slash enter. <laughs> just go to geekbeat.tv, and you can see all the reviews we've been putting out lately because there's a bunch of oh, them. Oh, yes. All right, thank you guys. Make sure you're following John on Google Plus for his antics and his humor and his brilliance. Whatever. At google.com slash plus John P. And follow her, google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis and also Twitter. Oh, yeah. Dot com forward slash Callie Lewis. Twitter slash John Post. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Are you having fun? Yes.